Hello and welcome to another submarine chat. We're going to talk about something which I think most people aren't aware of at all about submarines. Something I think is quite interesting. On the one hand, it's fundamental and it stops submarines sinking. On the other hand, it's really overlooked. Uh, this actually came up as a question and answer. I haven't been able to do the question and answer video that I've been planning, just haven't had the time. But this question was so good, I thought, let's let's deal with it. So I mean, quite a quick video. Like my other videos, this is unscripted, but I have prepared some materials, so let's get on with it. The question came from Alex D on Twitter. Do submarines have any kind of cathodic protection, which is something we call sacrificial anodes? Now, I'm guessing you, you may or may not know what they are. Um, let's introduce them. If you ever look at a ship, particularly when it's out of the water and you can see underneath it, you see these sort of metal blocks attached all over it. There's a brilliant photograph of them. And the reason is because different parts of the ship are made out of different metals. Typically the hull and the rudder are gonna be steel and the screw or propeller, and we call it a screw, but you know, it's the, the propeller obviously, that's made out of some form of bronze alloy. And there's something happens when you put two different metals in water. They basically become a battery. It's it got to be in seawater. And if they're physically or electric, electronically connected, they become a battery. And what happens is electrons go from one metal to the other. And depending on which metal it is, the, the combination, one of them will be losing ions. We call this um, galvanic corrosion. So if you've heard of galvanized steel, that sort of thing, it's the related uh, uh, occurrence. Now, the thing is, this can sink a ship, really, because part of your, your ship or submarine is going to be getting rotting and falling apart and getting holes in it. It's corroding. Now, the way to solve it is to put an extra, a third metal into the equation, one that is going to lose um, electrons at a quicker rate than either of the other two. So basically, if you add these blocks, and they're typically made out of zinc, they corrode instead of the ship corroding. Now, obviously, you have to replace them because they get smaller and smaller, but that's what they are. And that's why they're, they're sort of small blocks that you put on because they're designed to be replaced quite easily depending on the size of the blocks, the ship and so on, you replacing them, you know, yearly or more, or even more frequently. Do submarines have them? Yes, they do. Um, now what's interesting in a few ways, not only are they not very often spoken about, but they're not easy to see. One of the classes where it's the easiest is the Los Angeles class for older US Navy submarines. Here's one in dry dock. And you can see a sort of a bar there. That is those sacrificial anodes. And if I, I found a photo of them a bit closer, again, a Los Angeles cast submarine, very recent US Navy photo, a couple of years old. It's in dry dock. It's clearly having a lot of work done on it, but you can see those blocks. And they get replaced in, in dry dock typically. Now, there's a couple of reasons why they're not easy to see. One, of course, is that it's actually very rare to see the back end of a submarine because the screw is considered very sensitive. And I did a video on the submarine screws, so you can check that out. That's one reason. Also, when they're brand new, they might not be fitted yet. They're sort of thing that's fitted once it's in the water and they're very small. So with them in a strip like this, it's actually quite easy to see once you know what they are. But take, for example, this Walrus class submarine, it has them, but they're not obvious at all. And here's another submarine. Again, you can see one circled. I really struggled to find photographs of them. Um, this is a, a Swedish Gotland class submarine. Um, really interesting submarine, very impressive. There, as you can see, an anode, one of, one of them. There are some submarines that don't have them. The obvious example that comes to mind are 
is a submarine where the screw or propeller is made out of the same material as the rest of the submarine. And this, generally speaking, is going to be titanium submarines. Again, I've got a video on that. They're very rare and only Russia really makes them at all. And this is interesting photograph because you notice that the screw, the propeller is a silver color rather than a yellowy color. It's not made out of bronze. It's made out of titanium. And there's no sacrificial anodes um, required at all. The little white dots, they're just paint markings for depth and things. They're not, they're not anodes. But what's interesting, um, the follow-on of the same submarine, this is also a titanium submarine. In fact, you can see the metal is very, very white or silvery sort of looking through the uh, where the rubber coatings come off. But this is a really interesting pit photograph in so many ways of a very unusual but, but uh, operational Russian submarine. And it's made out of titanium. The screw does not look titanium. It looks bronze. Um, and they have added sacrificial anodes. Probably there's more if you were able to see in the shadows. So that's all I've got. I was just going to talk about that. Yes, they are a thing. Yes, submarines do have them just like ships. There's something that I think are uh, overlooked almost all the time. Um, but now if you do see a photograph or you see a submarine in dry dock, if you're lucky enough, you might see these anodes. Thank you very much.